Are you interested in automotive engineering? What are the career opportunities that you can explore within automotive engineering, specifically looking at the era of green technology? Welcome to the Zista podcast, where we invite industry professionals and academicians to answer questions raised by students within a specific subject area. Joining me today is Bastian Remer from Thomas More University of Applied Sciences in Belgium. So, welcome to the show, Bastian. Hello, welcome. Could you maybe start with a small introduction about, uh, you know, for yourself? Yes, uh, I'm a lecturer at the uh, Thomas More University of Applied Sciences in uh, the degree of automotive technologies. Um, and I myself am a lecturer of um, the courses related to electronics and uh, basic programming. All right. Thanks for that, Bastian. Um, so we've got a couple of questions that, you know, we want to get into, and I'm going to dive straight into that. Starting with, uh, you know, in your opinion, how have you seen the automotive industry evolve over the last 10 years? How has the automotive engineering aspect of it evolved? Could you, you know, tell us about that? Yeah. So in the last years, we saw uh, a big change in the automotive in, uh, in the aspect of electronics. So we saw that um, vehicles um, quickly developed uh, larger electronic systems, let's say, both in the controls of, of the engine, combustion engines, electric drivetrains, hybrid drivetrains, but also uh, in relation to the infotainment system. Yeah? So in a lot of cars, the the infotainment or, or the multimedia, let's say, um, for, for the entertainment of the, the driver and the passengers has increased a lot. And so did the electronics inside uh, the car as well. Yeah, and so have the connected experiences, right, between your mobile device and uh, the system that you have in the car, you know, with uh, Android, you know, Android and Apple stepping up their game. And I think the OEM manufacturers also keeping in sync with that. So I think that's resulted in really good experiences for customers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's that's the that's the customer uh, core relationship, let's say. But there's also behind the scenes, also increasingly connectivity be uh, between the car itself and the manufacturer, so they can. Um, have an eye on the car's performance, let's say, and also do some kind of predictive maintenance. Maybe that's not in place right now, but that's certainly something that we're looking into the future. Um, so that manufacturers can already give you a heads up, all right, maybe it's time to come in for a checkup because we see some anomalies in the behavior of the car. Right, I, I, I have read some articles on that and it's really interesting. Maybe we'll get you know more into that a little later in this episode. Uh, I want to come to my, you know, next question, you know, which is about how has the automotive industry adopted green technology? What are the initiatives that you're seeing? Well, it started uh, years ago already with the uh, reduction of emissions. So uh, manufacturers have, have um, developed their internal combustion engines to be more and more um, green, let's say, to reduce emissions and to be compliant with the regulations all, all over the world. Uh, in Europe, we have our uh, European uh, standards where the, the uh, manufacturers need to comply, of course. Um, reducing the emissions uh, year over year or period over period. And in order to keep up with those standards, they also developed hybrid technologies. So combining both the internal combustion engines with some electrical drivetrain and of course now in the late, uh, well, in the latest years, we saw the development of pure electrical vehicles. So vehicles with no combustion engine whatsoever anymore, and purely relying on batteries for propulsion um, of the vehicle. That's really interesting. And I think this is a trend that will continue, you know, uh, the next step, you know, in my mind is uh, how efficiently we dispose of the batteries, you know, because that also is resulting in some kind of electronic waste, you know, when the batteries come to end of life, uh, you know, so the more sustainable we can make the batteries themselves, I think it will really help us, you know, and the environment. Yeah, uh, and it starts with the, sorry, sorry, 
No, no, go ahead. was a question right there. So that starts with the design already. And I, since we're talking about engineering students or students that want to take the engineering approach, right? Um, having this recycling uh, idea in your mind from the beginning, from the design onwards, that helps a lot. As with all new technology, you first um, focus on developing and, and having the, the output, let's say, and later on you start to improve things with the recycling or with the end of the, um, the end use of the product in mind as well. Okay. I think that sounds fair, you know, and it's a good way to approach it. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, Bastian, you know, about Flanders, you know, as an automotive hub, what are some of the unique advantages that Flanders enjoys, you know? Uh... Well, we, we have a, a good track record of, uh, of, of our schools, let's say, of our universities. I think uh, Kyle Leuven, where the Thomas More University of Applied Sciences is, uh, is a part of, is in the top 100 of uh, international universities. So our education is, is, is quite good. And then we're also really physically in the center of Europe. So that makes that, that we're like three hours from Paris, three hours from Amsterdam, three hours from, from London, maybe. Um, and so, uh, well, we have, we don't have a lot of space. We have some test facilities regarding automotive in, in Belgium, but what we're really good is, is, uh, designing, um, parts of uh, vehicles at least and so since we're close to uh, germany where of course uh, everybody knows there's a, a big automotive hub um, we have uh, test centers here in belgium which work closely with for instance the development center of ford in in Cologne in germany all right all right yeah, absolutely. I, and I can imagine students at Thomas More or, you know, even uh, universities in that region, uh, maybe using their weekends to travel, you know, explore other places, you know, uh, so that's amazing. <laughs> you know, there's so much you can learn in the, in the course of traveling itself, you know, and that's, that's really nice. Uh, I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, about the careers that international students can explore, you know, in Belgium, in Flanders, within the automotive engineering space. So could you tell us some, about that? Yeah, so we we ourselves as a University of Applied Sciences focus on on um, people with a hands-on experience as well. If if uh, students graduate from our university, they will have hands-on experience. So typically, those students will uh, work in the after sales sector, uh, and then um, or they can work in uh, R and D centers, but more yeah. as a hands-on approach guy. Students graduating from from a university will rather end up in an engineering uh, department, uh, R&D facility maybe, or maybe at an importer and work at a, as a like a, an expert technician, let's say, for really problems that that uh, are so rare that they need to uh, be looked into very carefully. And then also not only for the customer, but those cases are very valuable for the R&D engineers as well from the manufacturer. So it's very important to report then back to, uh, let's say HQ, um, to, to tell them exactly what happened so they can um, take this experience um, for their next design, let's say. Right. And, you know, you mentioned earlier, you know, that there's so much uh, uh, that's happening in Belgium from a design perspective, you know, in terms of the components and, you know, uh, a lot of the engineering components that, are, that find their way into uh, big automotive hubs. So do students get a chance to work on research projects? Uh, you know, can you give me some examples? Yeah. So, um, well, at our university, students in their last year make uh, a bachelor thesis. And during this bachelor thesis, the student need to develop something practical. So uh, most of the the topics that we have come from um, from the industry itself, okay. and they're looking for um, students to solve a particular problem. We have a student right now working, for instance, on on uh, charging of electrical buses. Okay. There's uh, there's a limit on the the grid connection that this company has. They have certain buses that needs to be charged in time for them to drive their route, of course. 
The um, company has solar panels, has an on-site battery, and our student is going to combine everything together in order to optimize that um, charging sequence and thus solving the problem for that company. This is a very typical thing that we do. That's that's nice to hear. You know, students getting a chance to work on real-world projects. I think all engineering students out there would be, you know, delighted to hear that. Um, let me also ask you, you know, Bastian, you know, we're moving to a market where, you know, EV electric vehicles will really uh, become more and more commonplace. I think even in India, we're investing a lot in our infrastructure so that's, that vehicles can get charged at regular intervals if required. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, will mechanical engineers be uh, playing an important role in a in a market which is completely moving towards electric vehicles? What's your view there? Yeah, sure. The the vehicles itself, um, they are now and they will be in the future be mechanical components. Let's say yeah? we can't drive from one place to the other in the cloud. Impossible. So we need these uh, devices, these physical things. And as long as there are physical things, then it doesn't matter if it's battery powered or gasoline powered or diesel powered. If a vehicle object or if a vehicle, if an object will go over a bump, there will be some dynamic in that vehicle and you'll need to account for that in your design. So there is still um, a need for mechanical engineers as well in the automotive. We see that production techniques, however, change a lot. If we look at Tesla, for instance, they kind of um, try to take different approaches. And we see there, um, well, I presume that mechanical engineers had a lot to do with that. They are trying to um, change their production and they are now producing vehicles with a front end, one piece, a back end, one piece, and then a structural battery in between. So what we see there is that the drivetrain components, the battery in, is in fact the drivetrain component, will become a structural part of the vehicle itself. And so there is a, a big, a big um, effort from a mechanical engineer uh, in that perspective. I, I like what you said, you know, there are some things that can move to the cloud and for some things, you know, you're going to need the mechanical components and that's so true, you know, even if you add a layer of uh, AI and you have uh, self, self-driven self cars, you know, uh, a more automated structure which is trying to guide all the cars on the road, even those cars will require mechanical components and therefore mechanical engineers uh, do have a good future. So thanks for that. Um, I want to come to my last question, which is, you know, on the kind of projects and internships, uh, you know, well, what would be your advice to, say, a young aspiring automotive engineer? They want to succeed in this industry. What kind of projects or internships can they take up, you know, either in their home country or for that matter of fact, even in, in Belgium, you know, any any light that you can shed on that would be awesome. Well, I I think it's, it's not, um, of course, it can be very... Um, um, you can gain a lot of experience by working in a larger multinational company. Then you right. learn a little bit about the structures as well. Typically in those companies, your um, the things you will do are less hands-on and maybe it's more like a mock-up design than a real thing that you do. If you choose to do your internship at a smaller startup company, let's say, typically those companies are really looking for something to be done and you can really make a difference there. Of course, you don't have that corporate experience. You can't get, gain that corporate experience right there. I think the most important thing um, to take away from if you are if you want to do an internship is your state of mind. You really want to uh, have, an, have an open lookout for uh, to learn with your eyes, let's say. Even maybe you can't do a lot of things. You can see a lot of things. And you need to be uh, critical at the... Um, the things people tell you. So if they tell, okay, we do it in a certain way, you and you don't understand why, just ask it. And if you ask the questions, you will get the answers, and that's that's where you you learn something from. Absolutely, I, I like the advice that you're giving. You know, you're asking students to uh, and and it to stay curious and to ask the right questions, and don't be afraid to ask questions. And there was another good point that you made, which was about. Uh, not one kind of internship will be suitable for everyone, right? Some 
Some people may want to work in a larger setup, whereas some people may want something a little bit more hands-on and therefore working in a startup environment will, will really help them. So I think, uh, you know, you've done a good job in, in, in fleshing that out. So thank you, Bastian. I, I've really enjoyed uh, talking to you and learning a little bit more about automotive engineering. And uh, thank you so much for making time for this podcast. Perfect, no problem. My pleasure. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Um, you know, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And of course, you can catch the audio version of this podcast on platforms like Google, Spotify, and Apple. Our handle is the Zista Podcast. Till we meet again, our advice would be stay curious. Stay curious.